Janma-saya-yatam-vayaritara-tacate-svabhigya-svara-tene-brahma-hridaya-adhika-vayemo-yantijasura-yaha-tene-brahma-hridaya-adhika-vayemo-yantijasura-yaha-tene-brahma-h
O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Kata Krishna. Sramvantam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtanam. Punya Shravanam Kirtanam. Ridhyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Ridhyanta Stohi Abhadrani. Vidhu Nati Srit Satam. Vidhu Nati Surit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. And to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self-righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta prayeshu bhadreshu. Nasta prayeshu bhadreshu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way. And in this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. The devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastam o bhava. Tadarajastam o bhava. Kamaloba dayaschehe. Kamaloba dayaschehe. Cheta etarina vedam. Cheta etarina vedam. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus lust and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. <coughs> Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tatvigyanam. Bhagavat tatvigyanam. Bhagavat tatvigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante chasya karmani. Chidyante sarva karmani. Dusta evat manishwari. Dusta evat manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna, or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness, and from his devotees in Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Sixteen, Verse Number Thirty Six. Tayori vam kata yato, vam kata yato, prithivi dharmayos. Tada. Prithivi dharma yos tada. Parakshin nama rajasi. Parakshin nama rajasi. Prapta prajim saraswatim. Prapta prajim saraswatim. While the earth and the personality of religion were thus engaged in conversation, the saintly king Parikshit reached the shore of the Saraswati river, which flowed toward the east. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first canto, 16th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, How Parikshit Received the Age of Kali. <clears throat> chapter 17, Punishment and Reward of Kali, text 1. 
Sutta Uvacha, Sutta Uvacha, Tatrago Mitunam Raja, Tatrago Mitunam Raja, Hanyamanam Atat Hava, Hanyamanam Atat of Arts Anatomat, Hanyamanam, Hanyamanam Anat. Anyamanam anatavat Danda hastam chavrishalam Danda astam chavrishalam Dadrise nirpalanchanam Dadrise nirpalanchanam Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Sutta Goswami said, After reaching that place, Maharaj Pariksit observed that a lower caste sudra dressed like a king was beating a cow and a bull with a club, as if they had no owner. Purport, by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The principal sign of the age of Kali is that lower class <coughs> sudras, that is, men without Brahminical culture and spiritual initiation, will be dressed like administrators or kings and the principal business of such non kshatriya rules will be to kill the innocent animals, especially the cows and bulls, who shall be unprotected by their masters, the bona fide vaishas, the mercantile community. In the Bhagavad Gita 1844, it is said that the vaishas are meant to deal in agriculture, cow protection, and trade. In the age of Kali, the degraded vices, the mercantile men, are engaged in supplying cows to slaughterhouses. The Chatriyas are meant to protect the citizens of the state, whereas the vices are meant to protect the cows and bulls and utilize them to produce grains and milk. The cow is meant to deliver milk, and the bull is meant to produce grains. But in the age of Kali, the Sudra class of men are in the posts of administrators and the cows and bulls, or the mothers and the fathers, unprotected by the vices, are subjected to the slaughterhouses organized by the sutra administrators. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is the unfortunate symptom of Kali Yuga, that is the slaughter of animals, especially cows and bulls. And Along with that is unqualified persons becoming leaders of society. And we see that especially today, all over the world. It's amazing how a person like Stalin could become the ruler of the entire Soviet Union. He was a brutal, nasty man. And he did not hesitate to kill people. In fact, Mm. One of his top advisors was a man called uh, Mikoyan, this is his last name. And he described that Stalin once a week would call all his top men and he would give them uh, liquor and he'd ask them to dance. And if he didn't like the way they danced, he'd have them killed. <laughs> <laughs> and McCoyan said that uh, he was always in deep uh, anxiety with these weekly sessions because it, it all depended on the whim of Stalin. And Stalin, because he had killed so many people, Stalin, Mao, and Hitler, between them, killed about 100 million people. So... Uh, the uh, when Stalin was sick and he needed an operation, it's like right, this relatively before, one or two years before he died. He was so paranoid that he refused to take an anest any uh, a painkiller and refused to be put to sleep, so he wouldn't feel any pain. And because he couldn't trust anyone, especially the doctors. During the whole operation, when they cut him open, and I don't know what they did, but it was a serious operation, he was staring at them. 
Imagine how frightening that is. And it, all you have to do is say one word and uh, the, the soldiers would have killed the doctors. So, see, how a person like that, is a, a completely horrible person, can become a leader of millions and millions of people. And there are people today in the Soviet Union that still uh, like him. Anyway, uh, Hitler also, Mao Zedong also, Paul Fott, or whatever his name was, in, in uh, Cambodia, uh, Franco in Spain, uh, all different uh, horrible uh, dictators, and they caused the death of many people. And it's still going on. Uh, so that's the plight of Kali Yuga. First of all, these uh, low-class leaders will get prominent positions and number one business is killing animals especially the cows and bulls and eating them and the vices cooperate with them and they uh, they supply the cows they exploit the cows and then milk them three times a day and then when, when they're exhausted and they can't milk anymore they send them to the slaughterhouse and all the bulls most of them if not all of them, maybe a few bulls are kept for reproduction, but most of the bulls are killed, are murdered. And right, right away, as soon as the calf is born, they're separated from the mother and they're put in these little tiny like prisons. Uh, you can see them in, on big dairies. They're, they're little white uh, plastic type of uh, a shelter and they're kept in there, chained. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible, uh, you know, uh, treatment. Uh, whereas, if you come to the farm and you, you'll see uh, Rameshwari and her mother, Devahuti, and then and Gurangi with uh, her kids, Krishna and Madhava, they're always together, and they're always, uh, well, uh, at least for four or five months, they they freely drink the milk of their mother and they grow very strong, and they, they grow very fast. And they're happy. And when you come, they'll come running toward you and you can pet them, all of them. So, uh, the cow is meant to deliver milk and the bull is meant to produce grains. But in the age of Kali, the Sudra class of men are in the post of administrators, and the cows and bulls, or the mothers and the fathers, unprotected by the vices, are subjected to the slaughterhouses organized by the sudra uh, administrators. So this is a horrible situation, and because of that, there's a lot of turmoil in society. And there doesn't, doesn't seem to be any, uh, any abatement of it. It's going to go on unless something uh, very strange happens, just like you had mad cow disease in England and Europe and, and some places in the United States, people eating meat go crazy. It affects their brain and, they, they, and then they die. And then uh, also the vegans, they want to stop all uh, cow products and uh, eliminate the cows completely or, or at least not have any milk and not have any uh, meat and uh, basically reduce the herd of cows significantly to almost nothing. They think it's, it's uh, inhumane to drink the milk of the cow. It's only meant for the uh, the calf. That, by the way, is not true. But uh, that's their theory. And uh, they teach that to kids in, in uh, schools. As your son come back saying, I, I don't want to drink milk? Did, did, they, did they try <laughs> and teach him that? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're not we're not 
in favor of uh, industrial dairies where they're mistreating the cows. That's not good. But the cow is the symbol of peace and prosperity. And the bull is the symbol. And the cow is, is the symbol also of uh, religiosity because she, pr she produces pure milk. And from the milk, one can make ghee. And from the ghee, with the ghee, one can, one can perform Vedic sacrifices. So the cow and the bull both are representative of the Dharma. And we should uh, respect them. And it's very important to learn all the benefits of respecting and protecting cows. <laughs> like, for example, uh, cow ghee is extremely important, but it has to be made in a special way. It has to be made from yogurt. It should not be made in, in any other way. And it should be made by churning in two directions, not, not just by churning in one way, like putting it in a, in a blender. And if you uh, uh, apply cow dung, a cow uh, ghee made in this way, you know, made from yogurt and churned in both ways in a clay pot, and apply that on the soles of your feet at night before you go to sleep, and in your nostrils by putting one, two, three drops in each nostril and then laying down, letting it soak into your sinuses and so forth. Uh, many wonderful things happen by doing that. And I'm not going to explain them all right now. If you're interested in that, you might want to ask me. But uh, that would be a panacea for almost everybody in the world if they did only that. You don't need bypass surgery. You don't ha have to get hair implants. You don't catch any colds and get your sinuses blocked and so forth. I mean, it's a miracle what it does. Just that one thing. But it's got to be made in the right way. So that's only one thing. There's a lot more things that happen if you, if you learn how to make panchagavya correctly. And it's miraculous what these substances can heal. Cow dung, cow urine, and milk, and yogurt, and uh, cheese. So these things are medicines of the first order, especially if they're derived from uh, the uh, Indian cow. In fact, uh, cow experts in India claim <coughs> that the cows without a hump are descended from pigs. And they show pictures of a pig and, it, and these western cows are just large pigs. That's what they say. <laughs> it's unbelievable uh, in, when you look into history. And they claim that the Jersey cow is a Rakshasa breed. It comes from a Rakshasa animal. So, and what's amazing is in India, they kill the Indian cows and they're importing the Holsteins and the Jerseys to replace them. Unbelievable. All because the Jerseys and the Holsteins give a little bit more milk than the Indian cows. So everything has become corrupted in Kali Yuga. And... The first thing is the massive slaughter of cows and bulls, and disrespecting them. And then the second thing, uh, text two, says the bull was as white as a white lotus flower. He was terrified of the sudra who was beating him. And he was so afraid that he was standing on one leg, trembling and urinating. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The next system, symptom of the age of Kali is that principles of religion, which are all spotlessly white, like the white lotus flower, will be attacked by the uncultured sudra population of the age. 
They may be descendants of Brahmana or Kshatriya forefathers, but in the age of Kali, for want of sufficient education and culture of Vedic wisdom, such a Sudra-like population would defy the principles of religion and persons who are religiously endowed will be terrified by such men. They will declare themselves as adherents of no religious principles and many isms and cults will spring up in Kali Yuga only to kill the spotless bull of religion. The state will be declared to be secular or without any particular principle of religion and as a result, there will be total indifference to the principles of religion. The citizens will be free to act as they like without respect for sadhu, shastra, and guru. The bull standing on one leg indicates that the principles of religion are gradually diminishing. Even the fragmental existence of religious principles will be embarrassed by so many obstacles as if in the trembling condition of falling down at any time. So this unfortunately is true. And today um, you can see that there are many politicians and many professors in universities that are openly preaching atheism. And discouraging young kids who have no real way of, of uh, let's say, going against what they say, because if you go against what they say, you flunk your, your course. And, and they are uh, adamant, uh, adamant to teach Darwinism, adamant to teach Big Bang, adamant to teach uh, fluidity, fluidity in morals, There's moral fluidity. It's, it's just anything goes. And, and this is like ruining society. And the more there's uh, bestial types of behavior, uh, eating meat, engaging in illicit sex, and uh, cheating, lying, fighting, killing, taking intoxication. It's a very dire situation. And oh, what's interesting, I was I'm very interested, uh, if you go to Alachua, Florida, at, uh, at the, uh, the uh, temple there, almost, no, I would say, just about all the devotees there, or most of them, that are voting age, they vote Democrat. Now, how is it possible, Alachua? How is it possible when the Democrat Party de definitely, uh, militantly supports abortion? It's uh, unbelievable. So, not that I'm advocating vote this way or that way. You can vote any way you want, I, I don't care. But uh, this abortion is a big thing because you have cow killing and you have abortion. Those two things, uh, Prabhupada has explained that this is the downfall of America and Europe because, because of the massive cow killing and massive killing of children. Now this is going on in India also now and it's going on all over the world and people don't understand how detrimental it is, even our own devotees. So that's why uh, uh, to support any, th any organization that supports that. And then there's also, uh, like I said, abortion. So uh, we're living in difficult times and there's one silver lining and that is preaching Krishna consciousness because it's needed now tremendous in a great way it's not that one political party is better than the other. Uh, they're all politicians, and Prabhupada says, oh, uh, Shanika Pandit says, uh, don't trust a politician or a fallen woman. He doesn't mean all women, he says fallen women. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, politicians are usually lie no matter what party they're in. 
And uh, the biggest lie is, is the, that uh, propagating abortion as a noble act. Now, at least the Christians in this country are fighting against it big time. And they're right, because uh, abortion is un, uh, unfathomable. It's, it's, there's no way to, to uh, support it. However, killing the cows, the Christians don't talk about killing the cows. And that's just as abominable. So we see even the so-called good people are bad. This is the problem. Uh, being, you know, like being half right means you're wrong. Right. So unless we actually follow Krishna consciousness strictly, uh, being half right is not going to it's not going to do the job. You have to have a completely, uh, let's say, straightforward, up down Krishna consciousness in order to solve the problems of society. And there's got to be somewhere where people actually follow these principles, uh, whether it's protecting cows, whether it's worshiping Krishna, Radha and Krishna, whether it's doing Sankirtan, etc. Somewhere people have to integrally follow these principles in order to change society. So uh, Prabhupada established these temples and farms and restaurants and so many things to give example of people who are actually following Krishna consciousness because that's the only solution to these problems. There's no other solution. I don't see any other solution. You stop killing babies, but you continue killing cows. It doesn't solve, it doesn't solve, it's going in a good direction, but it doesn't solve the problem. Half right is still wrong. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'll show it to you right now. It's, it's in this first canto. One second. Okay. Oh yeah, I have to speak that speak that again. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, I was asking for any scriptural references that point to the fact that the cows are intended to produce excess milk that can be used for the human society. Okay, first canto chapter ten, number four, verse. During the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira, the clouds shower, showered all the water that people needed, and the earth produced all the necessities of man in profusion. Due to its fatty milk bag and cheerful attitude, the cow used to moisten the grazing ground with milk, purport by Srila Prabhupada. The basic principle of economic development is centered on land and cows. The necessities of human society are food grains, fruits, milk, minerals, clothing, wood, etc. One requires all these items to fulfill the material needs of the body. Certainly one does not require flesh and fish or iron tools and machinery. During the reg regime of Maharaj Yudhisthira, all over the world there were regulated rainfalls. Rainfalls are not in the control of the human being. The heavenly king Indradeva is the controller of reigns, and he is the servant of the Lord. When the Lord is obeyed by the king and the people under the king's administration, there are regulated reigns from the horizon. And these reigns are the causes of all varieties of production on the land. Not only do regulated reigns help ample production of grains and fruits, but when they combine with astronomical influences, there is ample production of valuable stones and pearls. Grains and vegetables can sumptuously feed a man and animals, 
and a fatty cow delivers enough milk to supply a man sumptuously with vigor and vitality. If there is enough milk, enough grains, enough fruit, enough cotton, enough silk, and enough jewels, then why do the people need cinemas, houses of prostitution, slaughterhouses, etc.? What is the need of an artificial, luxurious life of cinema, cars, radio, flesh, and hotels? Has this civilization produced anything but quarreling individually and nationally? Has this civilization enhanced the cause of equality and fraternity by sending thousands of men into a hellish factory and the war fields at the whims of a particular man? It is said here that the cows used to moisten the pasturing land with milk because their milk bags were fatty and the animals were joyful. Do they not require, therefore, proper protection for a joyful life by being fed with a sufficient quantity of grass in the field? Why should men kill cows for their selfish purposes? Why should man not be satisfied with grains, fruits, and milk, which, combined together, can produce hundreds and thousands of palatable dishes? Why are there slaughterhouses all over the world to kill innocent animals? Maharaj Parikshit grandson of Maharaj Yudhisthira, while touring his vast kingdom, saw a black man attempting to kill a cow. The king at once arrested the butcher and chastised him sufficiently. Should not a king or executive head protect the lives of the poor animals who are unable to defend themselves? Is this humanity? Are not the animals of a country citizens also? Then why are they allowed to be butchered in organized slaughterhouses. Are these the signs of equality, fraternity, and nonviolence? Therefore, in contrast with the modern advanced civilized form of government, an autocracy like Maharaj Yudhisthira's is by far superior to a so-called democracy in which animals are killed and, men, and a man less than an animal is allowed to cast votes for another less than animal man. We are all creatures of material nature. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the Lord himself is the seed-giving father, and material nature is the mother of all living beings in all shapes. Thus, mother material nature has, has enough foodstuff both for animals and for men, by the grace of the Father Almighty. Sri Krishna. The human being is the elder brother of all other living beings. He is endowed with intelligence more powerful than animals for realizing the course of nature and the indications of the almighty other, excuse me. <clears throat> Human civilization should depend on the production of material nature without artificially attempting economic development to turn the world into a chaos of artificial greed and power only for the purpose of artificial luxuries and sense gratification. This is but the life of dogs and hogs. So not only the cow should feed all people, the cow should also fertilize the land with dripping of, of milk from its uh, fatty, uh, uh, you know, udder. So that's only one. There's, there's about six different references uh, in the Bhagavatam to the importance of the cow. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. And we will continue. Where is the Prabhupada Kiji?